I'm taking Virginia Tech at nine and a half, and I never would have imagined that I would have been saying that a few weeks ago. But you look at Virginia Tech, they've won three or four. The game that they lost against Florida State, they worked themselves back into that game in yeah. the second half again against the Knolls. It made me finally there is real legitimate optimism uh, in, in Blacksburg, which would be a great thing because that's one of the great uh, college football communities oh, yeah. and, and fan bases to, and, and to see a game at Lane Stadium. So I took the, I took the Hokies. Louisville has found itself in, in they, they wound up pulling away from Notre Dame in the second half, but they found themselves in games against some some weaker competition. I, you, you beat Indiana by seven, beat Georgia Tech by five, you beat NC State by three. I, I, Jack Plummer really hasn't been good since that Notre Dame game. He, three touchdowns, four picks in those four games under 150 passing yards twice. So I, I, the Louisville defense, I think, will have to carry them in the, in the running game. I don't think you can necessarily rely on Plumber to have uh, a, a big game. Yeah. It feels like it's too many points here. It's it, worth, you, it might be, well, if you can buy it up to 10 for minus yeah. 120, to maybe get, get that number of 10 in there as well. I, I'd suggest doing that. Speaking about the Louisville offense, it's worth knowing they scored 23 points last weekend and then 21 the week before. Like they have not, their offense has not been quite the same right. as they gone deeper into ACC conference slate. And so Virginia Tech maybe can get themselves here. The Louisville Notre Dame result was like the most easily bet. Oh, yeah. It was like very obvious. So, all right, we have Virginia Tech plus nine and a half here. Possibly, if you want to buy to 10, go ahead. Uh, the next game here is a big one in Tuscaloosa. It's LSU at Alabama. Alabama favored by three. Total of 61. LSU 6 and 2. They're ranked 13th in the initial CFP rankings. They're 5 and 3 against the spread with all eight of their games going over. Alabama 7 and 1. Only lost to Texas early in the season. They're 5 and 3 against the spread. They start the CFP rankings at 9. Where are you going, Bear? I know the LSU defense is bad, um, but at the same time, I'm not sure Alabama's offense is one that's going to be able to really expose their back end. Milrose gotten better throwing the ball, but but I still don't know if Alabama will be able to do things like Missouri, yeah. and Florida State, and some of those other teams that have the better quarterback wide receiver play uh, have done to the to the Bayou Bengals. So, and I have concerns about about Alabama on the other side of the ball. Like we saw Texas had hit big plays yeah. against their secondary. We, we we saw Tennessee hit hit some plays like and neighbors and Daniels and those guys that they dwarf what Alabama has faced uh, so far. Daniels, his legs were a big factor. Yeah. Last year, 95 rushing yards in, in the upset in in Baton Rouge. Like, this line is super short. It's only a field goal. Yeah. You got to go back to, the, to 2010 to find the last time Alabama was this short of a, of a home favorite. So and They lost that game to Auburn, they right? Lost, they lost. Yeah. They blew that game to Auburn. That, that was the, they got up big, and then, and then and Auburn wound up coming back. Uh, LSU is the only team that have already a pair of upset wins over Alabama in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a really good chance they get a third. I, and n normally the odds makers will err on the side of caution and like make Alabama a bigger favorite yeah. than normal, knowing that they're going to get Alabama. Al but here I think it's lower because I think they're looking for Alabama money. And I, and I think there's a sense maybe internally in their power ratings that they think LSU might be the right side. So I took LSU plus three. Um, we'll see if I'm right or not. The last time I strongly disagreed with you on a wager, well, we bet a bagel on it. It was the Oregon Texas Tech game. I luckily covered that one. Um, <laughs> and you still, I, I still bring you felt bad. You felt yes, bad for me because that was bad. one of my yes. terrible, terrible beats of the year. It was. It did, it continue, I, I should have known what was coming then. <laughs> by the way, the, the warning signs were there. Here's 2023 yeah. in a nutshell. But but thank you everyone, um, for my bagel. Yeah, I do bring bagels. I I like Alabama a lot in this game because I think that when you go on the road like LSU and you can play zero defense, you're not gonna you're not gonna cover a game like this. And Alabama offensively has been up and down, but Milrow has kind of incrementally. Gone gotten better each week and their ability to push the ball down the field which is what he does best lsu secondary is not good enough to contain any sort of deep passing game and it's, it's, this game to me has nothing to do with the idea of oh alabama's only a three-point favorite nick Saban can't bet against him i just think it's hard to back a team on the road that cannot play any defense whatsoever and like there, there's no there's not even i was looking for like some sort of number for lsu like oh this is what they do well on defense it's nothing. No. Nothing. And, and so, somehow they got out of Columbia, Missouri with the win. They well, got a really good Missouri yeah, I, I don't, But I don't think 49-39 is going to be the final score of this game, though. If it is, LSU is <laughs> winning. Yes, I think so. Um, you, you mentioned Jay Daniels running the ball against Alabama. They've always struggled with with running quarterbacks. Like, But then again, 
who does? Who does? Who, who, who does? Everyone does. Like everyone, it's always a problem because they're so athletic. We're gonna talk about this, I believe, later in in the gambling group chats. One of our topics lined up for for Jane Daniels Heisman. Like this is the Heisman moment, right? If if you like him to win the Heisman, bet it now because if he wins this game, he's shooting straight up the the Heisman yeah. board, right? Like you, you just take it now. I think if uh, if you like him, all right. Let's get to the next game. Illinois at Minnesota. Number is uh, two and a half at some books right now. Total 43 and a half. Illinois is three and five with a single conference win. They're one and seven against the spread. Minnesota, five and three, two and three in conference, and three and five against the spread. Where are you going here, Bear? Well, it's Big Ten West. It will be ugly to watch, which is the, the motto of the Big Ten West. We, we, we play no offense. It's offensive to watch. I, following blowing, uh, blowing that game against... Uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, at least, was off. You want to take something positive away from that game. It was their best rushing output of the season. So uh, if Brett Bielman has an offense, we can just kind of rely on the running game, get by the uh, offensive line, play complimentary football. That bodes well, I think, for Illinois uh, moving forward. Uh, Minnesota, I I think, is a a team that I don't know how they're continually winning games. Uh, They struggle on offense. They struggle to put points on the board. Um, it's basically been been their opponents yeah. imploding. So uh, my, my my wager here is that Illinois will not implode. I think they'll have a safe game plan running the ball. I took Bielma plus two and a half. Here's one thing to to note. So uh, we know that Iowa's offensive coordinator, not, not related to this game yet, but Iowa's offensive coordinator, uh, Brian Ferentz, is going to be let go, right? Mm-hmm. Because he had to reach the, the threshold of 25 points a game. Yeah, yeah. Okay. With such a high number. Zero of the seven Big Ten West teams are averaging 25 points a game right now. It, it's a, And I saw, I forget what the Twitter handle was or the account or what the exact number was. But it, it, I, think the, I think the account listed like the 12, 10 or 12 lowest scoring offenses in the Power Five. Yeah. And eight of them were from the Big Ten. Yeah. How are the West Coast schools going to survive in this conference, buddy? I, 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 don't, I don't know how Oregon's <laughs> going to go go in there and, and be able to. Be able to <laughs> how are they going to go to Champaign and win? Yeah, I, I just I don't, don't know how that either. possibly. But that brings up a, a better macro question with how do we, and maybe it kind of circles back a little bit to the college football playoff rankings. Like, how do you view Ohio State and Michigan and Penn State? Yeah, their defenses are really good, yeah. but these offenses suck. Well, I think you just have to take it in, in, in when you play these teams. I mean, look, I, I have a general rule where it if it it's supposed to look lo- like it's supposed to look, and that's a positive. So if you're Ohio State and your defense is good and you play good against bad teams, you're supposed to play good against bad teams. Like like that to me is a not a positive, but it just checks the box. Okay, we play well against a bad team. Because how many times do we see a defense that we think is good plays a bad team and they suck, right? And, and and that bad offense scores a bunch of points. Like you, you're to me, you're checking the box. You're checking the box of Michigan. Checking the box of de- dominating bad teams. Ohio State checking the box of beating Wisconsin at Wisconsin, covering that game. Like I think they covered right. Or did they cover? No, was no, for one by fourteen. Yes, so it was either sorry, it was depending close. on what you got, yeah. you either lost but, or pushed. Like, but the point is, like you're doing what you should be doing if you're Ohio State and Michigan. Mm-hmm. So that to me checks the box. Okay. Now, when they play each other, obviously, it's the best offense they're going to play on, on either side. And so we'll know more about them in that game. But to me, they're they're checking the right box because other teams, like the team we're going to talk about next in USC, checks none of the boxes, right? Like, it, so you, <laughs> you check the box, right? The next game up here is out west, the big game in the Coliseum. Washington at USC. USC getting three points. The total 76 and a half right now might climb as we continue to talk about this game. Washington's A no, they're ranked fifth in the CFP. They're three, four, and one against the spread. They have not covered in their last four games. They're pushing against Oregon. That's why. Uh, USC is uh seven and two. They narrowly beat Cal 50-49 last weekend. USC is two and seven against the spread. Eight of their games have gone over this season. Lincoln Rally Overs is the way to go. Bear, what do you got here? Fight in the heart of that USC Trojan team last week. You were kidding on those text messages, I think, but they actually fought pretty hard, didn't they? They were down 14 I, I, points. And- I was kidding at first, and then it, when, when they did come back, I guess, you know, they, I, I, I said, it, said it in jest, but it's actually pretty impressive for them to, like, every, every reason in the world to just lick the stamp and mail it in. 
And they there were probably one. me, you, and four other people watching the game. They're down 43 29 and 14 minutes left in the fourth quarter and scored 21 straight points. Like they didn't have to do that. They could have just laid down and which is play. what their offense can do. Yeah. And we'll, also Cal fumbled the ball. But let's get to this yeah, game. Go ahead. What do you got? You you w you hit on that like their their inability to cover lately they they've been begging to get beat by inferior team by Arizona State yeah uh, Stan- Stanford Stanford Stanford, down, Stanford fourth down, fourth down, down pass. conversion yeah. that would and the SC defense has been a punchline they don't get any stops but Washington I I think like last year their defense was a problem and like it appeared maybe that their defense was somewhat improved but they don't get any pressure on the quarterback at all. Like that's a bad, bad deal this week against Williams and SC yeah. and the weapons that they have. So I think people are forgetting too. Like SC still controls his destiny to get back to the Pac-12 championship. Oh, yeah. Because the Notre Dame loss, obviously out of conference. So the people think I think see the two losses and automatically think, oh no, it's gonna be Washington, Oregon again in the Pac-12 title no. game. Like it's not. Like SC's got UW, they got Oregon, yep. they got UCLA. So it's right there for them to get back in, in despite of how much of a disappointment the season yeah. has been and how much of a disappointment their offense has been viewed as saying like, there's also an above average chance that I might hate myself for taking SC plus the three come, come the second quarter if they're down 28, seven, but I'm going to take SC here. I, I, I joke with the, the, the big noon guys on a call a couple of weeks ago when they were talking about Washington, it was right after the Oregon game. Yeah. Like, Oh, well, who's going to be, who's going to be Washington? I'm like SC is going to be Washington. This game is really interesting because of Washington's defense. Uh, also, Michael Penix is completing 60% of passes the last three weeks, but we won't talk about that. Here's our defensive stats. I'm going to read this to you guys. It's, it's important. It's, it's interesting. So, yards per drive, they're 112th, but they're 42nd in points per drive. That doesn't make sense, right? Typically, if you allow a lot of yards, you allow a lot of points. Mm-hmm. Uh, the third down defense is 97th in the country. It's terrible. Fourth down, they're 32nd because Arizona was 0 for 3 in fourth down. And what did Oregon? Oregon was 0 for 3. ASU was two for six, including one of those was a pick six the other direction. And Stanford was one for three. And they dropped that pass. I mean, like that, that explains their defense. Explosive play rate ninth. The, the red zone opportunity uh, score rate, opponent score rate's 31st, but they allow 94th in, in red zone touchdown percentage. Like it doesn't, none of this makes sense. They're 28th in pressure. They're 133rd in sacks. They have 10 sacks this season. That's, That's it. So their defense to me feels like a house of cards. Like the fourth down defense is holding everything up. Because the other teams aren't, aren't converting fourth downs. Like to me, I, I think this game Called is like coin flippy. Is 45, 42, 48, 45, 49, 46. I mean, like whatever combination you want to get to. Um, I, I, I don't bet 49, on 49, 46. That might be a score gummy. Bear Bets full episodes drop twice a week right here on the Bear Bets YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to stay ahead of the odds and let's celebrate all of our wins together.